All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I am going to show you some dark arts, some witchcraft, some magic and wizardry. I don't know if you guys are prepared, but we're going to dive right into it. Today, we are going to trigger drum samples live during a show and blend those triggered drum samples into our acoustic drum mics. A lot of times, you know, we don't have control over the drummer that we get. Maybe we don't like his tuning of a snare drum. Um, maybe he doesn't have a hole cut in his resonant head on his kick drum and we can't put a mic inside of it. Maybe he's a wildly inconsistent player. He's not very good at, you know, giving you the rim shots and, um, really hitting the snare drum in the center or maybe you just want to take your show from 80 percent good to 100 percent great all of these are valid reasons to implement live samples into your drums so first thing you guys need to do is get online and download live professor you're going to download that software load it and once you're in there you're going to come into the option menu here at the top you're going to hit audio and midi options you're going to have your console connected to your laptop at your show or at home practicing and you're going to tell live professor that the x live usb card is your input and output for your drum samples inside a live professor. So once you've done that, you can hit OK. Under audio inputs and outputs, this is where you're gonna select which channels from your mixer are going into live professor and what channels from live professor are coming back out to your console. So in my case, more often than not, I'm mainly interested in triggering samples for the snare drum. Usually kick drum is pretty much taking care of itself, but same thing I'm going to show you today is what you would use for kick drum sample replacement. So inside of audio inputs and outputs, I have input two selected because input two on my console is my snare drum microphone. And then I have output one selected. Now the trick is you have to tell your console where output one is coming into. Typically out of the computer, most Macs will send channels one and two out to channels one and two by default. So we have to go into our routing menu here and inside our routing, we're going to set up our drum sample to come from the computer into our console on auxiliary channel one. You can theoretically send it wherever you want. This is just how I have it working. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So this is how I'm doing it. Okay. So in your routing for your show, if you're using the local inputs on the console, you're going to tell it to use local inputs 1 through 8, 9 through 16, 17 through 25, 25 to 32. That's if you're using the local inputs on the back of the console. If you're using an AES device, you would select AES. If you're using a stage box over Cat5, that's AES. You're going to select the channels that you need to show up on your console for your show. Kick drum, snare drum, overheads, keys, guitar, vocal mics, all that's gonna be the same. What you're going to change is underneath the auxiliary inputs, you're going to tell the console it's getting its auxiliary inputs from somewhere other than the auxiliary inputs on the back of the console. To do that, we're gonna tab over To user, we're going to be on the input side of the user patch, and we're going to tell the console that auxiliary input one is now coming from card one. Card one is our laptop. 
we assigned output one on our laptop and now we're telling the console to receive output one on auxiliary one. From there, I've made my auxiliary channels the same. So auxiliary input two is auxiliary input two. Auxiliary input three is auxiliary input three. So you can still use auxiliary inputs two through six on the back of your console. Auxiliary input one has now been designated for card input one. So that's the only channel you're, you're losing, quote unquote. So once you've told the computer to send out output one, and you've told your console that output one is auxiliary input one, over here on your input list under auxiliary ends, you're gonna change that to user in one through six. And that's what we've done over here under user is we've told the console that auxiliary input one is card, two is auxiliary two, three is auxiliary three, four, and so on. So that's a lot of talking for a lot of boring nonsense. I have my microphone here and my microphone's coming in over channel two. We're pretending this is our snare drum microphone. So our microphone plugged into local channel two is our snare drum. The main things are tell your console that auxiliary inputs are user one through eight, then go change user inputs to card one, auxiliary two, three, four, and five. So to demonstrate, inside of Live Professor, I've loaded Steven Slate Trigger. I've loaded a few snare drums. And pretending this is our snare drum microphone, and this is a snare drum being hit. That's gonna be our input into Slate Trigger. So I'm gonna turn on Slate Trigger here. Now over on Auxiliary Input 1, The audio from snare drum microphone on channel 2 is going out of our console into the computer. It's being triggered inside of Slate Trigger, inside of Live Professor. That's being sent back out of the computer onto auxiliary channel 1. So I still have the audio from my snare drum microphone. We still have an acoustic snare drum mic'd up and going through the PA. But now we have a snare drum sample being played along with it. And you can pick and choose whether you're going to blend those two channels or you're going to completely replace the acoustic snare drum microphone with the sample triggered snare drum. That's up to you. I like to leave my acoustic drum mic up and blend in my sample. The main things that you'll notice is on our auxiliary inputs, we don't have gate function, we don't have compressor function, we don't have the low cut function, but we do have EQ. So I've EQ'd my channel to how I think it sounds good coming through the PA. But also inside of Live Professor, after Slate Trigger, I've also loaded the CLA 1176 compressor and you can see it's just wildly compressing that. So even the lightest snare drum hit is going to trigger a sample and that sample is going to be heavily compressed to come through, you know, super solid, fat every time, no wishy-washy drummer. Hopefully that makes sense for you guys. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I will answer them. The main takeaway is under routing, we need to tell our console that auxiliary inputs are gonna come from user input one through six. We're gonna assign card output one 
to auxiliary input one and then keep our auxiliary input channels on the back of our console open for any quarter inch devices we want to plug in on the back of the console and if you're going to record multi-track as well as trigger live drum samples on your card output tab you'll tell it local 1389316 that way you can still capture all your microphones from the show so you have a multi-track recording you have live drum sampling everything's right in the world I really hope you guys are blown away with this I hope you guys use it it works perfectly there are settings inside of Live Professor to decrease the amount of latency coming back into the console but honestly during a live show the audience cannot hear any of that latency the drum trigger does come in a little bit delayed from the audio of the snare drum microphone but we're talking 0.76 milliseconds of delay so less than a millisecond of delay so now you're running your show you've got your drum mics up drummer sloppy the tuning on the snare drum is atrocious and you don't like the way he plays his drums anyhow so you've got a perfect studio recorded snare drum coming in on auxiliary one that you can blend in i hope that helps you guys stay tuned for more videos we'll talk to you soon